Shalom, shalom. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are. It's a great opportunity once again. The Father has granted us. It's a blessing to indeed a fellowship with God through His Word, especially uh, through the good news. We discover a lot of things that pertains to life and godliness. This life and godliness is what we should focus on in do an exercise in that pattern. One, when we discover who we are, we begin to exercise ourselves according to that new identity that we found out about us. We should first and foremost believe who we are and then we do practice according to what or who we are. That's why the Bible talks about the godly exercises. So the godly exercises are so important because you are proving all right, you're, you're, you are proving that you believe. And again, uh, you cannot believe into something or know something clearly and you, you, you again ignore to walk in it. So we should learn how to walk in Christ and live in Christ and don't cease to perceive unceasingly um, our position and place in God to Christ Jesus. We are, for instance, discovering the power of death in all these things. Like I said, it is a great foundation and many have escaped or if you want, they have, they think they can do without it. But there are things which are so fundamental that if once ignored, then there is no salvation, there is no life, there is no success. Now what if uh, the issue is not knowing this uh, basic and fundamental truth, all right? Could it be that death is lacking? Somebody said that um, what people need is actually watch money. He said what people need is not to have a good life, to live well. He said what they need is to die well. And what he meant by that is to understand the death of Jesus Christ. And we fully identify ourselves with that death because that's where the key of the new life lays. So we talked about death in demonstrating the love of God as we saw it in Romans chapter 5 verse six and uh, verse seven but now in verse eight he adds something another point which is so crucial very very important he says but God demonstrates his own love towards us toward us in that while we were still sinners Christ died for us all right and then verse 9, it says, Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. All right. So he says, Now we are justified. We continue to be saved through him because what the work of death, the work of the death of Jesus Christ is so, was so, so important, so significant, so crucial that it, is, it's, it decides our experiences in life after death. Do you know that prophets saw and sought to understand the death of Jesus Christ? They had seen the cross. They saw the tribulations. They saw how the death of Jesus Christ in, in, in visions. And then they prophesied about the glorious life that was to follow his death. So there's his death first and then the glorious life. So unfortunately, since uh, people haven't discovered the death of Jesus Christ, which is followed by the glory of Jesus Christ. Why? Because when he died, he rose. And resurrection is the life of glory. And death is also an answer because it's bringing an end to the old you so that the, in resurrection, the new you may arise. So in verse 10, 
he presents something very beautiful. He says, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. Again, he uses death as a factor of reconciliation. Now he's saying there's no reconciliation between God and man without the death of his son. So the death of his son, Jesus Christ, plays as a reconciling factor between man and God. So even for some reconciliation, even to experience this reconciliation, there was a necessity of death. So death now is connecting, all right, man and God. So there is a connection between God and man through reconciliation, all right? And there's a reconciliation between God and man through his death. So his death gave birth to reconciliation. So you can't talk about reconciliation without death, all right? Let me give you an example that will portray this clearly for instance have you seen how you pick a seed right if you pick a seed and you sow it in the ground and after sowing it in the ground there is a way the seed dies according to uh, john he says every seed that does not die cannot bear fruits all right so when a seed dies there's a way it connects with the soil with the ground because you see the roots beginning to take place so there is a reconciliation between the seed and the ground in the death of a seed before it germinates I mean so before it germinates in the newness of the seed which uh, produces fruits you know you sow a seed and you will harvest fruits, all right? So when you plant a seed in the ground, there should be a reconciliation, all right, between the seed, because if there's a disconnection between the seed and the ground and the soil, then there is no life that will result from there. So there should be a reconciliation, and that reconciliation takes place in the death of the seed. That means the seed cannot remain what it used to be and that is to tell you that in resurrection, when there is the seed germinates, is no is much more than what it used to be. It has multiplied, it has been beautified, everything changes. You see now? This is amazing. So much, so he's, this is what then he says in verse 10, he says, For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. So the death of his son reconciles us. Okay, so there's a reconciliation in death. So still death here is playing a major role of reconciliation. So there's a hand in our reconciliation that made this a reality and that hand is death think about it again death is a blessing here it's bringing a bad reconciliation instead of separation now this is to say that if there's going to be a serious reconciliation there's death death is needed for instance remember when people do not agree over certain things or people are fighting over certain things that means everybody wants his side to be hard and to be um, supported. But you know when we die from our own uh, individual desires that are not even fruitful, they are, that are not uh, fruitful or inclusive, something of reconciliation takes place. So the reconciliation is in death. So there's a, there's a reconciliation that's given birth to death. Why? Because death will take away all that 
makes the reconciliation unreal. In other words, death will bring all two parties into oneness. So there is a, there's, then this is a salvific death. I'm talking about the death of Jesus Christ. Do you realize that this death was or is there as a message? But we, many did not say it that way. He says, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Now that there's a reconciliation between the seed and the ground, there's life now. He says that that seed will germinate. It cannot die. It cannot just stay as it is. It will germinate. So that's what he's saying. We shall be saved by his life. So because there is a connection between, because when you talk about reconciliation, you're talking about two parties becoming one here. And so if man is now one with God, God is the source of life. So that life to which we are connected now, that life which is our life now, will save us. Now say salvation here. It's not just talking about salvation as in now or as a sinner. Um, no, it's much more. It's talking about so so here. Still, it means, you know, set free from sicknesses, set free from diseases, set free from every kind of uh, bondage. So he's talking about salvation, hol holistic sal salvation. He's talking about spirit, soul, and body. All right, so the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So as long as we are united or one in that life, that life will do its work in us. It will produce godliness because before there was this ungodliness. And because of this life, godliness is now working. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. So he keeps on talking about reconciliation and he's now saying that through Jesus Christ we, we have reconciliation. Remember reconciliation took place because of death. Still death now works as a, catal a catalyst between you know man and God between um, between the ground and the seed. Remember, Jesus Christ is the seed. Our bodies are the ground. So there was this reconciliation or something new to be born. So you understand that this is what it means. All right, death is a factor in our reconciliation with God. Shalom, shalom. Mm -hmm.